Hey, here we are on a Sunday afternoon. Oh, hello. Hope y'all had a great Valentine's week. You all know my Valentine, my lovely Veronica. Good to see everybody. We had a lot. We did a lot this week, didn't we? We, we did, didn't we? We got high naturally. <laughs> we went up to we went up to Seventeen Tower. Seventeen flights to the top of the Freedom At Tower. The, the best Liberty University in the world. Where I, I'm, I'm scared of heights, and I was shaking up and there. And he one did night. a good job. Yeah. But we walked to the top. We walked to the top because the elevators were down. So that didn't well, stop us. We persevered. Yeah, yeah, he did get a little. I got a little shaky. It was his it idea that we go do it. It didn't help us. Shep pretend to push me off the lookout tower <laughs> and mom kicking me and to talk teasing, yeah. I was not kicking him and teasing yeah. me about the, the right. stones being wobbly right but uh, it was good to get back down I mean I love I never liked being grounded but I like being grounded then especially with my lovely Valentine and he was the first one down yeah good to, <laughs> good, good to see everybody guys um, and I hope you all hey spring is coming is. joy comes in the morning and if you're having a bad day Remember, spring is coming, and joy comes in the morning. And I want to talk a little bit about Jesus. And I want to talk a little bit about, I, I did a couple posts about, my wife and I are starting, what, like a week ago? Yeah. About a week ago? In Revelation. Revelation. We're studying Revelation. With David Jeremiah, though, he's helping us with some of the um, um, interpretation of it, or what the Bible really says. He's a smart man. If you ever want someone who really helps you, I recommend uh, David Jeremiah Commentary. He is really a godly man, and I'm not the smartest guy in the world, so David Jeremiah really helps me in many ways. But as a kid, before I gave my life to Jesus, one sermon I hated to hear from my dad. You know what that was? The rapture, second coming. Jesus is coming back. Oh, this guy who loved sin and this world and nothing to do with Jesus. I didn't want to hear that. No, I enjoyed my sin. In fact, I was one of the biggest, uh, back, back in the day, Pat Robertson ran for president. Man, I was on his bandwagon. I wanted Pat Robertson to win only because maybe he could make the America a Christian nation. Jesus won't come back for a while. That's the only reason I did it. That's the only reason I did it. And I actually became a precinct commitment in Florida. I'm knocking on doors and I won. I, I got 331 votes. My opponent got like 100 or something. And I became a precinct committee man in, in Florida. And really because Pat Robertson got me involved in politics. Now, when I went to Liberty University back in the late 70s, and you know, the moral majority and Jerry Falwell really got me involved in politics. But I see politics now. What I saw back then in my dad's church 40 years ago in Cleveland, Ohio, and Indiana, I was thinking, no, dad, it's not that bad yet. It's not that bad yet. It's that bad now. Worse than I ever imagined. It's worse than I ever imagined. About what Jesus has to say about the last days. You know, honey bunch, let me just kind of read a couple of scriptures sure. here. My love, my love forever. You know, it, it says here in, uh, I mean, how wicked this world is. And every time I turn on the news, I mean, uh, communism, Karl Marx, I mean, uh, uh, who was the creator of the evolution? What was his name? Charles Darwin dedicated his book to communism, to Karl Marx. Because they're all the same. Why? They have one thing in common. They hate God and anything that stands about for God. They hate him. And do we see that prevalent now, honey? People do everything they can to try to disprove God. He's not alive. They're saying he's dead. But I got great news, and that great news is in the Bible. Listen to this. 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 3, but know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, slanderers without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, hollies, Haughty, lovers of pleasure than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And from such people turn away. For th of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You know, when you say in Luke, it says, 
When you start seeing these things, look at this in Luke. In Luke, uh, what is it? Luke uh, chapter 21, it says, uh, For then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draweth near. Oh, my goodness. One of, the, one of the best things about working far away is I get to hear a lot of sermons on the road. And all of a sudden, most of the sermons I've been listening to now are talking about Jesus coming back. And this world, there's no hope in this world. None. And one day, I get such joy knowing that one day, everybody one day is going to stand in front of Jesus and say, Jesus, you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. Everyone's going to bow. Every knee, will, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that he is king of kings. That's in the Bible. And that's coming. How awesome is that? You know, I, I talk about my dad a lot. And, uh, uh, my, dad's in the, my dad's in a nursing home now. Bless his heart. He, he don't know. He, he, he barely knows me. But you know what blows my mind? He barely knows people around him. He knows the Bible. And all those people taking care of them, those five nurses are watching them day all the time. My dad's always saying this. He's always reading this. He's always not reading it. We're He's reciting, memorizing reciting it. it. He's reciting this in John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'd go prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and there you know. That's my dad. He recites the Bible all day long. He may not know much other stuff. But he knows about Jesus. And he's ready to go home. He's ready to go home. You know, uh, David Jeremiah wrote something here really awesome. I just want to share with it. I just want to share with it. Uh, if we, are, if we are armed with the truth, we need not fear. The great enemy that lurks around the corner for all of us is not the enemy of, at all. Jesus took the sting out of death. He gained victory over the grave. It is sad that so many people, even many of God's people, live in continued bondage to the fear of death. When we understand what God has prepared for those who love him, we need never fear again. If we have heaven clearly on our minds, then our only other concern is for those we love and those who have yet to hear of God's eternal plans. Every time my dad went to a funeral and they were born again on the way to heaven, he would always tell people there's two things here. Number one, that's not that person that you see in the open casket. Number two, if that person, that person when he's at now or she's at now is in a much better place and they don't want to come back. They would only come back to encourage us or tell their friends, uh, like in Lazarus and Rich Man, tell my friends to not come to this, you know, that place. But they would never want to come back, only to encourage us and tell people about Jesus. But I'm going to close with this here. Um, when the father came home from work, well, that's another story. In this book on D.L. Moody, on heaven, D.L. Moody told about a father that he met in New York. That father had a son who was periodically ill. No one really thought his illness was serious until the child took a turn for the worse. When the doctor informed the mother that the boy's disease was terminal and that he would not live for more than a few days, almost done. When the father came home from work that night, he saw that his wife weeping and he asked her why. There was a great charge in our boy since morning, a great change in our boy since morning, the mother said. The doctor tells us that he is very ill and may not live out the night. When the father went to see his son, it was apparent that the boy knew what was going on. He looked up at his dad and said, I'll be with Jesus tonight, won't I? The father answered, yes, son, it's very likely you will be with Jesus tonight. As the father spoke, Tears streamed down his face, and he tried to hide them. He tried to hide them from his boy. But the boy saw the tears and said, Father, don't you cry for me. When I get to heaven, I will go straight to Jesus and tell him ever since I can remember. 
You have tried to lead me to him. So that's how we want to live, right? That we want to be remembered for, for that's that. My dad. Yeah. Right? We want to be remembered for that because that's the way that's the way your dad is. And my mother's. And um I just hope, uh, you know, people realize that we're in the last days and there's no hope in this world. Only hope is in Jesus. We're going to get back to relationships next next week, but whatever the Lord leads us to do, because we just want to preach the gospel to as many people as we know. We love you. Have a super day. We're going to go walking, right, sweet pea? Enjoy some of those beautiful, almost spring-like temperatures. It's still a little chilly for me, but Base, I have to wear long sleeves. Right. Baseball's coming. Mm -hmm. And how about the Spring new look Cavaliers? Spring training has started. Mm -hmm. Go Tribe. All right. Love you, you all have a great Go week. Go Jesus. Oh, and don't Amen. forget to send your prayer request. Amen.